Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to LT Food Limited Q4 FI22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Motela Loswal Financial Services Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mrs. Samant Kumar from Motila Lodzwal. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to LT Foods Limited's 4QFY22 Post Results Earning Call hosted by Motila Lodzwal Financial Services Limited. On the call today, we have the management team being represented by Mr. Ashwini Kumar Arora, MD and CEO, Mr. Vivek Chandra, CEO, Consumer Business, Ms. Monica Jagya, VP Finance and Strategy, and Mr. Sachin Gupta, Group Financial Controller. We will begin the call with the key thoughts from the management team. Thereafter, we will open the floor to Q&A session. I would now like to hand the request to management to share their perspective on the performance of the company. Thank you, and over to you, Ms. Monica. Thank you, Suman. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our earnings conference call. I would like to highlight that certain statements made or discussed on the conference call today will be forward-looking statements, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. Result documents are available on the company and have also been uploaded on the stock exchanges. A transcript of this call would also be made available on the investor section of the company's website. I would like to begin by taking you through the key highlights of quarter four financial year 22. Our consolidated revenue for quarter four financial year 22 was up by 31% at Rs. 1,537 crores versus Rs. 1,169 crores in the Q4 financial year 21. This is on account of increased sales from all three business segments, that's Basmati and other speciality rice, organic food and ingredient business, and convenience and health segment. The gross profit was up by 27% from Rs. 404 crores to Rs. 515 crores due to change in product mix. The company did an additional investment in brands, and also there was an increase in the freight costs by 3%. That led to an increase in the other expenses by 40% versus last year. The EBITDA was up by 18% from rupees 138 crores to rupees 163 crores. The normalized EBITDA margins on account of increase in state cost was 14.1% versus 11.8% on year-on-year -year basis. The finance cost reduced by 2% and the overall fund cost was constant at 5.2%. The PBT stood Rs. 110 crores, up by 24%. The PAT stood at Rs. 75 crores, up by 26%. The earnings per share stood at Rs. 2.24, up by 27%. The cash profit was up by 21% from Rs. 91 crores to Rs. 110 crores. Our consolidated revenue for financial year 22 was up by 14% at Rs. 5,451 crores, versus Rs. 4,773 crores in financial year 21. This is on account of increased sales from all the, business, all the three business segments, that's Vaxmati and other specialty rice, organic food and ingredient business, and convenience and health segment. The gross profit was up by 14% from Rs. 1,608 crores to Rs. 1,836 crores, and the margin stood at 33.7%. The company did an additional investment in brand up by 50 bips, and also there was an increase in the freight cost by 180 bips that led to an increase in other expenses, which were up by 139 bips versus last year. The EBITDA was up by 4% to rupees 620 crores from rupees 598 crores in financial year 22. The normalized EBITDA margins on account of increased freight cost was 13.6% versus 12.5% on year-on-year -year basis. The company has generated significant free cash flow amounting to Rs. 373 crores, up by 8%, driven by the strong performance in financial year 22, that has led to decline in overall debt by Rs. 229 crores. The finance cost reduced by 21%, and the overall fund cost was down from 5.2% to 4.8%. The PVT was up by 6% to Rs. 428 crores, 
from rupees 402 crores. The PAC was up by 7% to rupees 309 crores from rupees 289 crores. The earnings per share stood at rupees 9.13, up by 7%. The cash profit was up by 9% from rupees 432 crores to 398 crores. Now, I would like to highlight the key ratios of our balance sheet. The debt equity ratio improved from 0.7 to 0.5 times as the overall debt of the company has down by, was down by rupees 229 crores to rupees 1061 crores on yearly basis. This is to reiterate that the majority of our debt is working capital debt, which is required because of the nature of our business and our focus is to maintain the debt to EBITDA ratio between two to three times, which stood at 1.7 times versus 2.1 times. Current ratio has also improved significantly to 1.78 from 1.70 last year. The return on capital employed stood at 15.6%. The normalized return on capital employed on account of the insurance claim stood at 16.2%. Return on equity stood at 14.4%. Because of our continuous focus on the working capital optimization, our net working capital has reduced by 28 days to 207 days in financial year 22 versus 235 days last year. That's all from my side. Now I would request Mr. Ashwini Arora to share the business uh, updates with you. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Good evening and thank you for joining us on the call today. In financial year 22, the company continued to deliver on all its strategic pillars, thus growth, margin expansion, and further strengthening the balance sheet with a 14% growth in revenue gross profit growth of 14% and bad growth of 7% and significant strengthening the balance sheet. Satisfying growth has come from all the businesses. Basmati and other specialty rice with a growth of 9%, organic food and ingredient business with a growth of 19% and convenience and health segment with a growth of 62%, which is 2% of our revenue and has crossed a milestone of 100 crore and has reached to a 121 crore. This is the first year of the big new product initiative going in the market and the initial sign of consumer acceptance are very positive. And we are continuing our progress to achieving 10% of our revenue over the next five years from the new product line. We will continue to maximize shareholder return by keeping our focus on profitable growth. Digitizing HR transformation and ESG that will act as enabler for the next level of growth. The company has adopted a structured approach for its ESG, that is Environment, Social and Governance Initiative. The company has always delivered its growth and expansion metrics in an environmentally responsible and socially conscious manner, which has given the company already functioning program to dovetail into the structure of the ESG initiative. Programs like LTS, LT Spinal Sustainable Rice Production, Watershed Management, Adoption of Village for Livelihood, and Clean Drinking Water are already impacting at a large level and are now being scaled up. We will share a more insight on ESG, HR and digital transformation projects in the due course. Thank you. Now we open the session for question and answers. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may enter star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. A first question is from the line of Arpit Shah from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to understand what is the roadmap 
So let's say reach an ROC of 23%. Because if I see for the last decade or so, we have been hovering around 14, 15%. So what are the levels we have uh, in the company that where we can take the ROC to 20% plus? Is it going to come through operating margins or is it going to come through a reduction in working capital? So what would be the roadmap over there? Uh, thank you, Arpit, for asking this question. And the roadmap is, uh, as we have defined, uh, you know, to improve the product mix and, uh, uh, you know, on the scale. Uh, uh, this is the two things. And third is optimizing, uh, optimizing the working capital. I think all these three initiatives will uh, take us to, you know, uh, the ROC of uh, 20% which we are working towards, 23%. So what would be the timeline of these two, uh, like two measures? Um, what would be the timeline? If you see, uh, you know, uh, historically we have improved on our gross margin. Uh, we have, you know, uh, taken the advantage of scale. But uh, for the last two years, because of this COVID, this inflationary uh, pressure has uh, impacted. Uh, so in the coming year, we will see the improvement on the ROC. Got it, got it. So, so currently, it's just one more question. Uh, currently, LT Foods is generating close to 500 crores of cash flow from operations every year. Right. So other than the minimal capex of 100, 150 crores, our cash flow requirements are not very, very large. You, you believe that buyback is an opportunity to deploy capital given the valuation that we trade at, let's say, the, the enterprise valuation of a company is around 3,500 crores and our free cash flows will be close to 400 crores. So would it make sense to go for a buyback? Would that make sense? Uh, yeah, that, that uh, makes sense. But uh, as I said, you know, we are evaluating uh, all these metrics. And uh, surely, you know, uh, that's, uh, we are evaluating all these. Okay, okay. And also, what is your perspective on the industry growth for the next, let's say, for the next five years? Uh, what would the industry growth look like? And what kind of market shares we have in all the territories we're operating, be it Europe, US, India, even in the Middle East? What would the market share LT Foods would be holding in the market? Okay. So, but, you know, on, on the uh, category growth, you know, I will speak and then I will pass on to Mr. Speak for the answering your next part of the question. Uh, as far as category is concerned, uh, uh, if you take India, India as a category is growing in double digit and so on, you know, in America and Europe. Uh, Middle East is only the uh, uh, territory which is not growing, but all these three categories are growing and where, you know, LT has a strong presence. Uh, on the market share, you know, I will so, so, so the double digit number would be, uh, let's say, close to 15%? Or would be much lower than that? What is that? What is the question? Double digit is going to the group. India gets a group in Europe. For us? No, for the category. So, industry, I, I, I told you, you know, the, both the, uh, uh, the, the America and India and Europe, they are growing in the range of double digit. I just wanted to range. What would be the range for double digit? Would so, it be? Say, say 12 to 15%, 10 to 15%, I would say. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. in uh, terms of market share, our brands have grown at a faster rate than the market, and uh, we've picked up market share. So, in, in India, we've picked up almost a 1.5% share. And especially in the channels where the growth is coming. So in e-com, we have a, a leadership share in modern trade as well, in, in uh, stores like accounts like Reliance and T-Mart. We are market leaders in uh, e-com channels like Amazon. Uh, we are market leaders. So that is, um, as far as India goes, in North America, we run close to a 50 share and I'd say close to it would be about 49%. Europe is about 20% market share. Uh, Far East, in the markets where we are operating, we're in the 
uh, percent overall share. So that's really the share positions that we have uh, across with, uh, you know, uh, as we say, eight odd markets where we are the absolute market leaders with numbers like 49% in America. So I hope that answers the question. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Just one last bit on ROC again. I'm just uh, putting a pressure on that. So you think the ROC, like, it would come 20%, 20 20-30% by just improving the product mix? Because if I see your premium portfolio, and if I see the basement, the portfolio gross margins are probably similar between 30 to 35%. And even if I, if I, if I see your organic portfolio, the gross margins are not that very high. So your product mix, where would that margin be driven from? If your question is around that, you know, are we sure about that? We are, yes, we are sure about that. And I told you uh, how we will achieve that. Uh, the NPD, the new products, uh, as the new products will be requiring lesser of my working capital. The working capital cycle in the new products is uh, comparatively less. It, is, it requires a working capital cycle of 90 to 100 days. Once that 10% uh, of my total revenue comes from the uh, new products, I will have a working capital reduced and my overall margins, uh, what I'm uh, projecting an overall increase in the margins in the Basmati segment, that is an increase of 1.5% over last for the next uh, five years. This will, both will be contributing um, in a ROC of uh, more than uh, 22%. And what is the share of new products in our revenue right now? Today it is... Uh, it is currently 2%. It is, uh, 2% of my total revenue. And you expect this to go to 10% in the next five? Yes, yes, that's right. And that should drive 1.5% increase in your operating. Yes. Good. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our next question, we'd like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter star and one. We'll take the next question from Kriti Sool from NVS Research. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, yeah. My first question is regarding um, Golden Star acquisition. Uh, so if you can give a little more color, like was it funded internally or through borrowing? And what is the EBITDA margin for Golden Star? Uh, hi, Kriti. Uh, you know, this is little, you know, we are in the phase of completion. This is uh, a little confidential, but maybe in the next call, you know, we will explain more on that. Okay, yeah. all right, understood. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, um, my next question is that um, paddy prices are higher, about 20, 30 percent, and we are yet to increase our prices in a meaningful manner. Uh, so, how do we plan to mitigate the rising input costs and? Uh, how would a strategy involve, evolve in terms of procuring paddy? So, uh, you know, paddy procurement has already been done. Uh, 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 and uh, as far as prices in, increase is concerned, you know, partly uh, we have passed on uh, to the consumer and it is well accepted. Uh, only thing is, like, you know, we have got a price increase in the freight which is, you know, just uh, roughly three times of what we have paid last year. That we are in the phase of uh, uh, passing. Okay, all right. And uh, if I may ask one more question, uh, there has been a slight degrowth in the organic segment as compared to the previous quarter. Uh, can you please let us know the reason for the change? Yeah. And what is your percentage of organic business India versus international? What is the split, please? Yeah. Sure. So, Kriti, if you see uh, on an annualized basis, the organic business has grown 19% year on year. And uh, the last quarter is, you know, it's a, it's a mostly B2B business. And sometimes, you know, shipment uh, staggered to the quarter to quarter, but if you see on yearly basis, we have grown by 19%, which is extremely very strong numbers. 
okay and uh, what percentage of your organic business would be india versus international so it's mostly uh, export business to the europe and america okay all right that's helpful i'll get back in the queue thank you so much thank you priti thank you so much thank you our next question is from the line of uh, aman madreja from augmenta please go ahead yes sir thanks for the opportunity i think sir i was asking as you mentioned that uh, the growth in the middle eastern market is in single digit so could you just uh, like highlight on the reason like why is it so is it because of saturation or some other factors driving the growth over there because as you know middle east is the largest consumer of basmati rice your voice is echoing uh, question is what is causing middle east to not grow okay so there are uh, okay i mean so good question the there are, you know uh, reason is you know last year i think because of uh, this uh, covid situation uh, they have stopped up uh, uh, their inventories and that has an impact uh, on on this year sales so as far as consumption is concerned middle east is a very kind of matured market so growth is uh, uh, very minimal kind of thing you know and uh, because of the political situations also iran is uh, kind of plus minus with plus plus minus okay uh, and can you uh, give up the break up of the uh, current inventory of books like in terms of padian uh, rice Uh, so that is uh, you meant to say inventory yeah inventory what amount of paddy we have on book and what amount of rice we have uh, so you can you can write a mail we will you know share the information with you oh, okay sir sure. thank you thank you our next question is from the line of shubhankar roja from sks capital please go ahead Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, a couple of uh, them I have. Uh, what's your uh, further uh, uh, date deduction plan for April twenty-three? I mean, you did a uh, uh, great job by uh, you know approximately two thirty crores of uh, date deduction. What's your plan for the for April twenty-three? That's one. And secondly, what's your um, ad spend as a percentage of sales for April twenty-two? And what is your uh, plan for twenty-three? and third is in terms of this trade cost uh, pass on uh, how much of that you are able to pass on for 22 and uh, where are you in terms of negotiating with your clients uh, uh, in terms of passing on this trade cost hike because your competitor has said clearly that they were able to pass on the trade cost uh, almost entirely to the customers uh, so where are we uh, in 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 doing that Okay, so uh, uh, Harsh, welcome to the evening. Uh, so I will answer your question, you know, line by line. So on the on the debt, uh, 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 the the free cash flow uh, will, you know, as as per our policy, uh, will go, you know, in three parts: in dividend, in growth, and uh, in the reduction of the borrowing. But we are not now very keen in uh, so. Uh, in the reducing borrowing we already in a, so we we will look for an opportunity where uh, you know we can we can uh, use this capital in a in a productive manner uh, okay and on the freight cost uh, you know it depends on market to market uh, uh, so and and competitive landscape uh, we will we will evaluate how much to be passed on and how much to be kept that's a very strategic call it depends on market to market on on the ad spend yeah so ad spend is 2.3% we spend all right and will that go up a bit because you launched uh, new products and uh, which are doing i think really well Are you, yeah thank are, you. do you have any plan to spend more on that no we have uh, uh, at the moment enough portfolio uh, to 
grow it, we have uh, ready to eat, we have ready to cook in our portfolio. And as I said, you know, we are getting a uh, you know very good uh, interest of the consumer. And the categories are large enough to give us a you know volume of that. Vicky, you wanted to add on this? Yes, and, and as we build each of these, we we will be increasing the ad spend, uh, but we also will have a synergistic in, impact because all of them are under the Dabba family brand. Overall, uh, the ad spend will go up to close to three percent next year. Um, in uh, at, at from the 2.3 percent this year, but you know, ad spending is something that you take a call on quarter to quarter basis once you see what's happening in the market and with the business. But in the, the philosophy is to spend behind these in, initiatives. All right, all right. Thank you so much, sir, and good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our next question, we'd like to remind participants you may enter star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from Sanjay Vatramani from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good evening and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so can you uh, highlight the realization value for uh, rice, which is uh, basmati and non-basmati, I mean, for exports and for domestic markets? Uh, yes, sir, Jay, we can, we can see yeah. uh, So the realization in the uh, domestic market is uh, 51 rupees and in the export it is uh, 110 rupees. Okay. Uh, so this uh, 3% uh, you mentioned for ad spends, uh, this will be for FY23, right? No, we are giving that as an indicative figure, and of course, when we say ad spend, say it is the totality of what we're spending on electronic, digital, uh, print, etc. But yes, indicatively, we will be building it from 2.3%. Okay, okay, okay. And I mean, if you were to take that as a percentage of the branded sales, it's already at about three, uh, uh, close to 4%, just under 4%. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, any uh, revenue or margin guidance for FY23, if you can help us with that? Okay. So we will, we will keep the, you know, uh, momentum. Uh, next year you're asking about? That's right, FY23 I was asking about. Yeah, so we are positive. We, uh, we will keep the momentum, you know, growth momentum. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, any major issues or risk you are facing on uh, supply side or container side challenges, if you can highlight some of those? So risk is, uh, as I explained, you know, we, we have to pass on the price uh, increase to customers. That's the only risk. Uh, on the service level or supply chain, uh, we, we don't foresee in the short term, you know, any, any risk on that. Okay, okay. And uh, sir, can you tell me the major competitors? I mean, who are the exact competitors for us? So, in a different geography, you know, different competition is there. Uh, in India, you know, KRPL is in our competitor in consumer space. Uh, so, again, you know, very different market, different competition. Okay, okay, that's all from my end. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Romit Nagpal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes, Romit, yes. Very audible. You yeah, wanted your view on the recent Adani Wilmer Kohinoor acquisition in mm -hmm. terms of whether you think it's going to put pressure on margins to grow market share in India? or you see something positive to come out from this? So, Romit, uh, Kohinoor was present in the March heat, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a long time. So, we, we don't see any uh, big, you know, impact of that. Okay. Uh, fine. The other thing I wanted to ask you is regarding your... Uh, entry into the ready-to-use sources, 
which you are now present in is this something which uh, what is the size of the market you see here and is it fairly fragmented uh, or competitive or is this part of a larger play into becoming a complete food business player like uh, yes sure see uh, we are uh, we define ourselves as a consumer food company giving food uh, specialty food in uh, terms of specialty rice and rice value adds so all the adjacencies where there is a consumer need which which we can with our core competence satisfy we are into uh, when we talk of uh, sauces there are two kinds that we have in market we just had a very good uh, initial very uh, very well accepted launch of a biryani kit which is giving sauces for making biryani and we have rice sauces sauces some of these are emerging needs and those markets will be pioneered by us some of these are in the market uh, where we will be taking share but our philosophy is sort of driven more <clears throat> around the fact that we are uh, meeting consumer needs in terms of uh, all the consumption meal occasions in the day and where we can come in uh either we'll pioneer or we'll pick up share so i think uh that would depend case to case in the case of right sauce sauces we are pioneering so the size of the market we take more from other cooking sauces like pasta sauces etc and that'll be in the region of about 400 to 500 crores so i would it be fair to say that you are trying to build on your core competence of rice and look at something adjacent into that rather than just uh being all over absolutely you know we are uh, building on what uh, dawat as a brand stands for and where it extends so certainly we're not going to be all over as you rightly said and okay. we are not seeing only the india market india is one market and we have a global footprint where you know need of these products are uh, very well established okay that nice to know again congratulations on a nice set of numbers that's all from my side thank, thank you thank you thank you rohit thank you our next question is from the line of riya from lkp securities please go ahead hi so am i audible hi yes riya thank you thank you for the opportunity so just in continuation with the previous participant uh, so are we looking at any uh, strategic uh, acquisitions or takeovers of some sort yes you know the our growth strategy is to grow organically and inorganically and uh, on that uh, strategy we have done that acquisition in usa of uh, a, a very strong brand of jasmine thank you sir and and we are open and we keep evaluating uh, the okay yeah Okay all right and uh, so another question uh, so is there a chance of the government going ahead and imposing um, restrictions on say export of rice as well and if so how well are we prepared for this so as far as uh, you know uh, government has clarified their position and uh, we uh, as a company is in the specialty basmati if you see historically and government has not done that uh, so but on non basmati also uh, government has clarified on all the rumors you know okay okay so if i could just squeeze in one more so uh, any capex plans for the next 3 years this is a very normal uh, uh, we will be in the range of uh, 100 crores 80 to 100 crores 80 to 100 crores yes. okay all right thank you sir that's all from my end thank you thank you ray Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Arpit Shah from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for your opportunity again. Uh, I was just thinking. Let's say we have seen now it's on a very long piece of time, and we have scaled up. Let's say from a thousand crore revenue to today a five thousand crore brand, and we are very consistent. We have very consistent margins and ROCs, which are very much decent. I'm just trying to get my head around why we trade at such valuations. What is it? Why do we trade at around seven, eight x? Uh, 
maybe 5x our cash flow from operation as the as the expansion and thank you for all the compliment actually you know when we started lt food the revenue was 3 crore rupees and right here we are uh, we are we are very proud of as an lt food and on the valuation front uh, i think uh, you are you people are the better people to and guide us or address on that but for sure you know uh, we understand uh, as per you know competitive landscape as a consumer food company we we as a company is enterprise very enterprise so so if let's say we have a fund cross free cash flow coming in almost every year the roic is investing in the stock itself would be a lot better than investing in the business right so if my valuation are let's say 25 crore or 35 crore enterprise valuation and i'm getting a 400 crore to 500 crore cash flow every year uh if you buy that the stock your roc will be significantly higher than what you're getting in the business yes uh, you know uh, we are evaluating this uh, option okay so so there uh, okay okay so i just wanted to understand one more piece uh, from the business let's say when we support our farmer uh, in terms of uh, let's say seed score in terms of nutrients for for farming so when 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 it, when it comes to let's say buying those crops buying the paddy so do we have to be in the bidding uh, place again or we you can directly buy from the farmer itself or you have to come to the mandi and everything how does that work all the models are available uh, in some states like punjab and haryana uh, you know as per government regulation we have to buy through mandi but in madhya pradesh and up uh you can buy directly from the farmers so punjab and haryana would be through mandi and mpup would be through uh, directly through farmers so yes. over here whenever we are making a let's say payments to farmer so that those payments are channel uh, through uh, cash or a channel through banking channels how, how does that work it's completely through banking completely through banking right and that is true for the whole industry or to defer I can, i can tell you about lt food uh, that i cannot tell about right? but as an lt food uh, uh, we pay the farmer through bank okay okay and 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 the royal food that we have in us where we have 50% market share so what would be uh, what would be the market share let's say the number two player or what is the name of the number two player over there So number two player, uh, if I can huh. guess, is five to six percent. You know, less than double digit. You know. Okay. okay. And that would be Indian brand or would be US brand, sir? Uh, you know, so means the Basmati is Indian, but brand can be owned by the, the American company or other company also. Got it. And got 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 got. And on the Koinur Foods, which was just acquired by Adani Bilba. So, what would be the scale of that business, and you see any large aggression from that group on ground currently? That I think that Ani will know. But uh, as far as you know, the Pohinu brand is, you know, it is in the market for the last thirty years, uh, and uh, I think uh, brand has its own strength. As in uh, last time when they were, they were in the range of three to four percent market share. We are focused on market share. Perfect. And over the last, uh, we have seen KRBL scale up well in, let's say, in the Middle East. We have seen some some of the other companies like Shamanal and all of those companies scale up well in the Middle East. But somehow we we have been seeing a single digit or a typical double digit kind of revenue share coming up in the Middle East. So where why is not chosen the strategy to go in the Middle East? Uh, with, so with the Middle East. Uh, good question you know every company has its own strategy and play from the you know the own strength and uh, we chosen to you know uh, uh, play from india uh, europe and america middle east is a little mature market and as a strategic call we thought you know let's focus on the other market first and this we can take later on got So, so currently, let's say in India or in the US, our biggest advantage is the distribution that we have. Let's say with modern trade, e-commerce, or, or even the general trade. So, distribution advantage is very large in India or even in the US. Are, are you are you thinking to bring up some smaller products 
to penetrate those distribution be it like chips uh, be it some other because in, in the organic foods we do have other pulses we do have some other grains so is, is there a way where we can uh, you leverage our distribution to get up some of these organic brands is there and the possibility to to do, to do that so the the region today yes sir um Firstly, you know, I'd like to say that in addition to the distribution strength, and that certainly is a strength in these markets built over many, many years. The other big strength that we have in this, in these markets, is our brands. Our brands are recognized in these markets for premium and consistent quality. They have very good imagery. So these two become very strong leveraging point for us, coupled with our back end strength that we are able to supply from India. We are certainly using these this distribution network and the brand. We've launched uh, the RTH Royal RTH in the U.S., which is doing very well this year. We've launched Kappa Rice uh, in India, in the Middle East, in markets like Australia. Uh, we've launched. sauces sauces and biryani kits these are all riding on our distribution network which therefore uh, do take you know the dawat brand across uh, consumption occasions and formats and further strengthen the brand and the distribution helps us to get it there uh, far more quickly than somebody else would be able to and also provides us the efficiency and scale to our distributors Got it. Because the kind of distribution we have in the in India or even in US, we could easily launch a Dawat, let's say a dal product or a Dawat moong dal or a Dawat something something on ready to eat or ready to cook. So those those kind of innovation that we can of course do for uh, all our brands. Even even in non Basmati rice, right? even without using the Dawat name, we can just launch a new brand in the non Basmati segment and scale up that business, right? No, it's, I mean, it's a good point that you make, and certainly we can do that. Dawat uh, and Royal Sona Masuri, for example, are non-basmatis that that are doing well. Kari Kari is a snack that we've come in, which is again doing well and uh, is again riding this network. Other products that you mentioned, we're always looking for ideas, and thank you for those suggestions. We'll put them to the NPD team, and they will evaluate that through our stage gate process. Got it. Got it. So, is there a way where we can actually break out from the growth rate that we are doing, like let's say 10, 12, 13, 15, and we can possibly move to let's say 20% growth rate in the next two years while we continue to launch innovations uh, through the Dawat brand or through some other brand where we can just leverage our distribution, scale up the business because our business channel is set, our business model is set in terms of margin, in terms of ROC. We have to just leverage the distribution, right? Is there a way we can? Certainly, I think you know whether it's 20%. Uh, when you see a number, you see a composite number. There are markets which are growing in that region of about 20%. But I mean, as as Mr. Rashmi Arora has always explained, our levers are three: profitable growth is one of them, and the others, uh, you know, in terms of capital deployed, in terms of efficiency. So it is the totality of the business rather than just you know using that to get scale. Because I think our scale is today increasing at a good enough pace to deliver to us the strengthening of the balance sheet uh, metrics that we have given ourselves five years ago, and we are very happy and proud that we are on that journey year on year. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our next question, we'd like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter star and one. The next question is from the line of Harish Shah from HS Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I have two questions. Uh, if you can just uh, highlight uh, what is the freight amount uh, for this quarter as well as the last financial year as compared to the respective quarters and financial year. That is my number one question. And question is, if you can uh, share the contribution of Horeca, uh, how much we have uh, grown from this segment overall, and on a specific focus on US and Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Rish. 
So our logistic cost uh, during this year is 426 crores as against 287 crores last year. And in this quarter itself, our logistic cost is uh, 140 crores. Uh, last year, same quarter, it was 65 crores. Uh, about the Horeca contribution? Horeca roughly contributes, uh, you know, to our portfolio. If you talk about India, it's a 20%, but uh, globally it is in the range of uh, 15%. And in your key market, that is Euro, Euro, US, Europe? So that's what I said, globally, uh, you know, if you take an average, 15% sales come from Horeca. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Mehta from Dynamic Invest. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Aditya, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I had a couple of questions. So, my first question would be, uh, could you please tell us about the upcoming product launches, if any, and what sort of investment in the brands do we foresee for, you know, FI23? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah um, Aditya, uh, what we just launched a few products, a biryani kit and uh, biryani gravy is being one of them. Uh, that we will be scaling up. Uh, we also have launched uh, Kappa Rice, which is doing, um, you know, well, and there is therefore, uh, again, we are scaling that up. So if we see the next sort of... Uh, three to six months, we've just got two of these big initiatives in the market which need to be taken across both India and internationally. And they are doing very well uh, internationally as well. I think that really is going to be in terms of, if you see new products, we also have uh, <clears throat> RTH in the, U in the US and Dawat Sehat in India. So Royal RTH and Dawat Sehat which are really big contributors at this point in time to our revenue, but the potential for both of them is much higher. Uh, we certainly are going to be, or to, to your second question, we're certainly going to be putting investment, brand investment, against all these four initiatives. Uh, uh, I mean, exact details of that we cannot disclose right now, but there would be significant amount of marketing and uh, uh, promotion spends on all of these. Um, okay, okay, sir. I understood. So, and my other question would be, uh, let's say after six months, if exports are today, and uh, when when the voice voice got Aditya, the can you just say uh, your question again, please? We missed some part of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, let's say after six months, if the exports are back in a big way, and when the container prices price reduces, or we, you know, uh or we are we are trying to export to other parts of the world so uh, will, will we be able to meet the demand so your question uh, can we reframe your question please so after six months what do you say after six months if the if the exports are back in a big way and if you know the container prices reduces is uh, will it be suitable to say that we'll be able to meet the demands Already we are meeting the demand uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, whatever the demand of the market we are all seeing, it's only the freight rate, you know, which is impacting the PNL. But if, you know, freight rate will come down, this is always, always be advantages to uh, LT4. Okay, okay, sir. So, uh, and my last question would be if I, if I could squeeze in one. Um, so, what is the differential in terms of gross margin of exports versus the gross margin of domestic? Just a minute. Can, uh, it, is, uh, it is in the range of 1.5%. Uh, 1.5% to 2% it is uh, the difference between the two. Okay, okay, sir. Understood. Okay, okay so yeah. Uh, thank you so much. That, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Harish Shah from HS Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the follow-up. I just have two questions. 
Uh, how will Jasmine Rice help in expanding our portfolio? Uh, like, what's the market share of Golden Share, Golden Star? I'm sorry. And if we are exporting to China and Iran now, uh, what would be the contribution from Middle East? Thank you. So, Harish, you know, uh, answering to your first question, Jasmine Rice uh, is a direct synergy to our distribution uh, in, in USA. And as far as brand is concerned, that has market share around 10% in that market. Uh, and how about uh, my second question with regards to, like, if we are exporting to China, Iran, the status and the contribution China, China from Iran? China is a, a non-Basmati rice, and, uh, uh, you know, it's not a very, it's a very technical thing. It's not a very strategy. Yeah. Iran, we don't do business. And the contribution from Middle East? For us, you know, is a roughly contribution is 8%. Uh, it is around 8%. 8%, 8%. 8% comes from medicine. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the floor back to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your continued support. Hope we were able to address all your queries. Should you have any further questions, please feel free to contact our investor relationship team. Thank you, and we look forward to connecting with you. Thank you, and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Motila Loswal Financial Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.